Greetings and welcome to another episode of LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today it is the Danmere Backer, the PC hard disk tape backup system. Yeah, that's right. You can back up your data to VHS videotape by the use of this ISA card that works on 386 and up PCs of the time period. Seriously. Although backing up computer data to tape is not the most unusual thing in the computing world. Uh, retro computers had cassette tapes that they backed up to or read games and programs from. And then you still have data cartridge tapes that are used for backup solutions and store tons and tons of data. But backing up to VHS, now that is a new one on me. So let's see what we got here. Time to get up close and personal with the Danmere Backer, with this model also being known as the Backer 16 Hard Disk Tape Backup System. It was sold right around the start of 1996 by Danmere Limited of England for 60 US dollars. And this uses monochrome composite video signals only to do its thing either in PAL or NTSC format. Yeah, there's no audio here whatsoever, it only uses the video signal. According to the box, it can store up to one and a half gigs, but from what I've read, it actually ranges from 750 megs to three gigabytes, depending on your settings, compression options, and what kind of tape that you use. Updated models were available through the late 1990s, including one that was a little sleeker looking. This was an external box that connected via parallel and did much the same thing, but could store up to four gigabytes, same as the later card version, the Backer 32. Now you might be wondering who was this made for? Well, anyone on a budget, really. The backer's big appeal was price and convenience. Since a VHS tape was around $2 at the time, a lot less than the $15 or $30 a tape cartridge of a similar capacity might cost. And of course, you just used your VCR instead of shelling out for anything more specialized. It also boasted a nine megabyte per minute transfer speed or around 150K per second, similar to other VHS backup systems of the time. And yeah, that means the backer was not the only VHS backup system for home computers. There was the aptly named video backup system for the Commodore Amiga, and perhaps most notably was the Arvid 1000 series, which was more similar to the backer being that these were ISA cards for the PC. And they were made in Zeliningrad, Russia in 1992 through the mid 90s. And get this, there was even a group called Transcom that distributed shady software compilations on VHS, which kind of blows my mind. However, even with a few points in their favor, Danmere's backup system never really caught on, and as such, it's incredibly hard to find one now. But the company stuck around for a while after giving up on VHS backup systems, reorganizing to become 4TV Limited in the year 2000, and working on things like TV set-top box software until the company finally dissolved in 2014. All right, let's get to opening this box finally and see what we get inside because I actually purchased this as a new inbox product, although it was open, so hopefully it's all still intact. Let's see here. We have some floppy disks. That's always nice. Oh, this one's for 95. This is for Windows 3.1, so uh, that's good. That makes sense. So yeah, there's the card itself, the uh, original ISA model. That is a ton of switch commands there for these uh, little jumpers. Mmm, a product license. This agreement is governed by English law. It does not affect your statutory rights. Well, that's good. I eh, get a registration form here. Envelope you have to stamp there. Yeah, Cheshire, England. I'm sure my English viewers have a sense of pride. Ah, apparently this is version 1.21, either of the unit or the manual. Let's see here. Thank you for purchasing this product. Uh, you're welcome. 21 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just kind of plug it in and install the software, it appears. Although, that IO address guide is uh, rather intimidating. Oh yeah, and there's some stuff I was wondering about too, like long play. Looks like it says uh, it doubles your storage capacity, but in practice, these, this facility degrades the quality of the recorded signal, which makes sense. There's some information on the different uh, video interfaces, impedance, performance, thing, things like that. So uh, that's, that's cool. Extended options. Mmm. Uses DMA channel one or three. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the stuff I'm kind of worried about. Just curious if it's gonna work. It uses DMA channel one for data transfer. If another expansion card uses this channel, you must change the DMA setting of that card. But that can be switched either on the sound card itself or through software, usually. 
Usually I say, well, let's just get this thing installed. Mm, that's seal. Not broken in over 20 years. Oh yeah, that is a fresh card. Not a whole lot going on here, which, I mean, that kind of makes sense. I'm assuming the software is doing a lot of the work. And, uh, well, I'm already fingerprinting that up, sorry. These are the two video in and outs, and these go to the uh, opposing ones on your VCR. Well, let's hook this up. I am insanely curious to see how this thing works. So I am going to install the card into my Windows 98 capture box here, which is what I do a whole lot of work on LGR on. It's just tossed together with whatever I need at the moment. And today it needs a Dan Mir backer. So you can't really see it too well, but there is one single ISA slot in the bottom there <laughs> that I'm gonna try to put this into. I've never actually insert anything into this because it runs Windows 98 and uh, there we go. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother screwing it in because screw that. A rather important part of this is getting a VCR that is good. And I'm going to go with uh, this right here, one of my favorite VCRs, a Panasonic PV4760. It's just one of my favorite VCRs, both for the way it looks and its functionality and whatnot, and the fact that it has this ginormous, wonderful remote. <laughs> it's, it's great. There we go. And this display is magnificent, and so is this one. I love VU meters like that. Like seriously, just check this out. Isn't that delightful? So I figured that might come in handy for um, absolutely nothing in this case, since it uses complete video signals and no audio at all, but uh, it makes me happy that they're there. I grabbed a couple of uh, brand new VHS tapes here from Goodwill. These are Maxell's a six hour one and an eight hour one. I think I'm gonna go with the six because typically I have better results with video quality with like lower uh, capacity type of tapes. So I'm gonna go with this one. And if we need to, I have another era appropriate thing that also picked up a Goodwill. Like everything I have is from Goodwill. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's Rakuten Video VHS Head Cleaner, a non-abrasive wet system. Although curiously, I also noticed that uh, Best Buy still carries VCR video head cleaners, which is pretty great. So if that doesn't work, this one should, because I literally bought it yesterday. Brand new, what the heck Best Buy. So around the back of the VCR here is where the business is gonna happen. And it says to use the highest quality composite cables you can get. Uh, these are the highest quality ones I have uh, from Acoustic Research. So one goes into the video in and one goes into the video out. So I'm gonna stick the uh, blue one here to video out. And then the red one to video in. It's a tight fit because these cables are ridiculous. So yeah, so the sound card that's installed in here right now is an Aureal Vortex 2, and I believe it does use the DMA that this needs. So I might need to disable that address first or, you know, swap it to get it to work. I, I don't know. Let's see if this works. We should just need to put... Wow. There we go. And then... Yeah. That should be it. So I guess first up is to see whether or not this is going to work with anything. Now let us run set up the delightfully 90s background. Yes, let us install now. Man, I'm glad the disc works because I did not want to try to track down these drivers and software on its own. Yeah, it looks fine to me. All right, let's see what we got here. We got some, uh, some stuff. Not installed. Requires installation. Well, I mean, Let's see what we got here. Is it even detecting the card? I'm betting it's not even showing up here because of the sound card, so let's check that. Typically, I just go into the BIOS and start swapping things around or whatever, but I just removed the sound card because I don't need it for this. So while I'm waiting on this to reload, I'm going to go ahead and get this new tape into the VCR. Mmm. Mmm. Smells fresh. Nice. Okay, here we are with no sound card. We'll see what we... It's still not showing up. So I've manually made it look for one of these. Um, I don't know about that. Eee, I, you know, okay, fine. If that worked, awesome. Backer is a high-performance backup up. So backup up system? It really says that. Use the video health check menu to verify your system is properly configured. We'll definitely do that, because I still have my doubts since I just, like, manually chose this thing. Um, 
Okay, let's see here. Video health check. Failed DMA transfer. That's what I thought. Okay, well after some troubleshooting, I figured out what was going on. So let's run that health check once again. And uh, we should get an okay with DMA. And yes, we do. Seems to be all good. So what was happening was it wasn't just going to be conflicting with DMA1 of the sound card, but also DMA3 of the parallel port ECP mode. So, uh, yeah. I just ended up switching some things around and eventually got it to work. So let's give this thing a shot, finally. Although I'm not entirely sure how. <laughs> let's check the options here. Well, I, I, I don't really know. I'm just going to leave this as it is. Of course, we want NTSC and uh, yeah, this is all fine. I'm, I'm just going to leave it as default and let's see if we can back up. Mm, let's start with something small first, like, let's see, Crystal Caves. Yeah, approximately 38 seconds to do that. Interesting. Well, let's see if this works. When ready, put the video in record mode and click start. Starting the recording right here. And let it go for a couple seconds to get past that lead in bit. Here we go. Pressing start now. Okay, so it is writing the tape header. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. So it's processing file by file now. We'll see writing tape footer. Okay, stop the video recorder. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, so it looks like it has made this backer.slug file to let me know what is in theory <laughs> on this VHS tape. So we have the options to restore files from videotape or verify. Press play when you're ready. Awesome, and there we go. Let's see what we get. All right, got the buffer going. Playing, presumably. Come on, find something. That arrow rate thingy lit up. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's not doing anything at all. Um, that sucks. Yeah, that did suck. So I started the troubleshooting process, starting with using that head cleaner tape, which made me feel better, but actually did absolutely nothing for the process of backing up with the backer. So I tried other cables, I tried another tape, I switched around the settings in the software, I tried compression, I tried different data clump sizes and speeds and redundancies, switched around the card slots and DMA settings and just everything, nothing changed. So I whipped out my trusty wood grain 486 and installed it in there, thinking that, I don't know, maybe something was just weird with that computer I was trying it in. And it turns out that it worked just fine with Windows 3.0 and the software and drivers that it came with. I had to actually install 3.1 on here just temporarily to get it running, but you know, here we go. This is what happens when the backer is doing what it needs to do correctly. And it's pretty fantastic. As you can see, it found all the files and backed them up exactly as they should be. And that was at the default settings. So I cranked everything up to the max to try to get that full nine megabyte per second claimed speed. And I just backed up the entire drive, which was around 80 megs or something and save for one library file in the Windows folder, it got everything backed up perfectly, which is pretty surprising, I gotta say. And then finally, I just had to see what this looked like when you hooked it up to a TV, and this is what you'll see. Again, there's no audio here, it is just a composite monochrome video signal. This has been the data you've been seeing here, and then the header and footer look like this. And yeah, as much as it thoroughly amuses me that I can back up a computer hard disk to a VHS videotape of all things, I can see why the Danmere backup system wasn't exactly a rousing success in the time period that it was released. I mean, this thing was being sold into the late 90s and competing against things like zip disks, uh, continually cheaper CDR and CDRW solutions, and then higher capacity and really cheap at the time, uh, hard disk solutions. I mean, there was a storage boom happening in the late 90s and VHS videotape, I imagine, it wasn't really on a lot of people's radar for computer backup solutions. And then there's also just the reliability factor. Like <laughs> it's this analog composite signal. Eh. And to get the capacity that it claims that you can get, you need to put it in SLP, which is lower quality. And then you start running into those problems like I saw, like after one backup, you're already missing a file or two. And sure, it's just a file or two, but you don't want to miss anything when you're backing stuff up. Speaking of working, why wouldn't you just be able to maybe use something else other than VHS? Doesn't have to be VHS, just anything with video signal, right? That's analog and, well, yeah. I mean, I'm just 
it's assuming you could use like Betamax or Mini DV or the heck even maybe eight millimeter, I don't know. It, just anything that it could possibly see from a video signal, it should be able to back up to. Uh, I haven't any of those other things to try though, so I can't do that for this video, sorry. Um, it did say though that you could like get two of these backer systems connect them like one computer and then the other and then back up directly between the computers with no tape or anything in between so that does lead me to believe that really as long as it sees that video signal it's fine um so yeah that's interesting but <laughs> whatever i'm just rambling at this point and i hope you enjoyed what you saw because i enjoyed making it And if you did happen to like what you saw here in this episode of LGR Oddware, then stay tuned. There are new episodes of LGR Things every Monday and Friday here on this very channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching what you just did.